Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office with another detailed tropical weather outlook for June 7th, 2024 on Friday. So looking at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com, link in the description below this video. And as we can see here, we do have a lot of moisture that is being focused over Cuba, over Jamaica, over the Cayman Islands, including for the Dominican Republic, as well as the southeastern Bahamas, where we have more showers, more thunderstorms, and alleyway for all of this moisture to get uh, to be fed off of the deep tropics over here in the southwestern Caribbean. And all that moisture has to go somewhere. It can't just stay in one spot with the jet stream to the north. This is allowed for this moisture to actually uh, be able to stream northeastward into the jet stream where we get more some um, cyclogenesis going on here because when cold air meets warm subtropical air, we usually get some cyclogenesis type storms going in the mid and high latitudes this time of the year. Otherwise, much of the deep tropics over here looking pretty quiet because we do have some Saharan air that is moving off of Africa. And what I mean by the Saharan air layer, I mean this area here. See that little brown fuzz? It's very hard to make out. It's a little bit of Saharan dust coming off of Africa. And what that does, that usually acts to suppress any thunderstorms, any uh, or a lot of moisture uh, to be able to form in the deep layers of the atmosphere. You do have moisture there with some of those low-level stratus, but it's very stable and warm aloft, and that's why you're not able to get anything. But looking good in the Atlantic for the time being. Now, really quickly, when we do take a look at the Eastern Pacific, there's a monsoon gyre that's getting ready to develop and become better organized and could affect on what goes on for the second half of June. We have a lot of deep thunderstorm, deep convection going on. We even have a few areas of more tighter spin within this bundle of energy. We'll see what the National Hurricane Center does with that within the next week or so. No chance of the development over there, but just kind of pointing that out with you all in today's video, there's a lot of deep convection that will soon to help um, get this monsoon gyre going. Therefore, nothing expected in the tropics over the next seven days from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida that makes these updates four times a day. Okay, so right now they're on their second one of today and still nothing to be concerned about in the Atlantic. Versus in the Eastern Pacific too, nothing going on there over the next seven days, which I am a little surprised given the amount of deep convection that we're already starting to see um, collaborate there. We're starting to see some spin, but more than likely it's probably because of that stable air that is moving and transversing that area aloft. The background state not very favorable and we're seeing a little bit in the way of a lackening of a uh, more tighter circulation. So that's probably one of the reasons why they're really not optimist, optimistic on that. And this is over the next seven days. So good news, the tropics in both basins holding really quiet for now. But I know for a fact that the Atlantic will soon wake up with vengeance, I believe, in the second half of June. Okay, so here's a look at the latest GFS model. This is the American model looking at a slice in the atmosphere. So this is at, in the low levels, this is at 850 millibars, 5,000 feet above the surface. I don't want you to get, all get confused on, oh, what atmosphere layer are we looking at? This is the low levels. This is not the surface. This is not the mid levels or the high levels. This is the low levels. All right. And this is very important for us as forecasters when it comes to tropical genesis formation in the deep tropics in the Caribbean or in the Gulf of Mexico or even in the main development region simply. All right. So we're looking at a three plot system. Okay, three plot system here on this map. Sorry if I did not make uh, my writing on this can be a little finicky sometimes, right? When I'm using a mouse. So three plot system. So simply what we're looking at here is vorticity in yellow shading, orange shading. We're looking at our height contours, the lines of thicknesses, 
that are in black. We're looking at our wind barbs that are like this. I showed this to you all yesterday, and this basically tells us in, in a three-part one series on this image, shows us, oh, what is the atmosphere doing? What is it giving us clues of, right? So this really, really helps to kind of unlock, unpack the whole definition of what this is showing us. So in this case, um, we're not seeing a whole lot going on in the deep tropics. Very stable going on, not much convergence going on in the low levels or the mid levels at all. Nice, good, stout trade winds blowing across the Atlantic, keeping things in check, allowing the Saharan dust so-called what we looked at on satellite, to move off and really keep things tamed, keep things in check. Because if we didn't have that Saharan dust, we would probably see something try to develop out of these one of these tropical waves. Here comes a tropical wave coming off of Africa, but really not going to do much at all in the next, say, um, five or seven days. Just the background state, not quite there yet to get us anything that could really develop and congeal or coalesce into something. However, instead, we are gonna have to watch the Central American gyre, like I said, we showed you that on the satellite imagery, that deep percolating convection in the Eastern Pacific. That's gonna eventually kind of wind its way up into the Northwestern Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And the ending result can be either good news as in we don't get anything developing out of that monsoon gyre, or we could have a plethora of systems that develop off of that. Yeah, that's what the monsoon gyre can do. And it's it can be so, it can be a big deal because we had Michael off of that. We had some of the more intense hurricanes that formed off of that monsoon gyre, like Cristobal, you get the idea. So going forward, you can see at least by the end of this week, this is, Thursday, June the 13th, not the end of this week because we're in the current week next week. Sorry, folks, I get my weeks all confused. Um, but you can see here we have trade winds doing this and they kind of curve all around. So we do have somewhat of a monsoon gyre going on here with these westerly winds here in the deep tropics in the eastern Pacific. And there's our wedge of that wave. And boy, wherever we get a coalescence, very hard to predict on global numerical modeling doesn't do it really well very this far out so it's going to be no it's going to be very interesting on which area or if we get an area that coalesces or is able to congeal focus at energy the cyclonic momentum that is um what what word was i looking for i was thinking of a word can't think of it, of it on the top of my head but you get the idea the angular momentum, that's what we're looking for. That bundle of energy, is it able to really concentrate that and develop into a tropical storm or a tropical depression? We shall see. The GFS, you know, is really biased when it comes uh, to any vorticity that comes off of the, the Central American mountain range here in Venezuela. You get, you take one of these little bundles and it just goes crazy with it with something like this. That is why I am not quite confident that we're gonna get anything significant. More than anything, gonna be a lot of rain, that you name it, a lot of rain, a lot of wind, probably a lot of thunderstorm activity in Florida and in Alabama and Georgia, but I do not see anything that screams major hurricane or anything that could really develop quickly into something big. The background state not clicking into action yet. I think that's going to happen towards the latter part of Jan June, say beyond maybe the 25th to the 26th of June. We'll probably start looking at something um, probably in this area because it takes a little while for the monsoon gyre to really uh, get in an optimal position that allows these waves to really develop. Now the big question is, when is the Atlantic going to wake up from the dead. All right, a little analogy there. When is this quiet spurt going to end and when are we going to see activity? Well, the one way we can see this is looking at the velocity potential. I've used this in a lot of my videos recently and this is simply where there's upward motion, enhanced thunderstorm convection, and where there's sinking motion, suppressed thunderstorm convection. Saharan dust, in this case, 
coming off of Africa, right? And so we're seeing a little bit of that right now. Oh, wait, no, we're over here. David, wake up. So we're over here in a little bit of that Saharan dust. Not a whole lot going on right now, all right? And eventually, this upward motion is going to get us into the much of the Atlantic over the next, probably the rest of June. Now, some of you are probably like, then why, David, is there not any activity? All right, so I'm doing a little bit of studying and a little bit of research. I believe it takes a little while for the atmosphere to respond to this. So I imagine once this upward motion gets over Africa, I mean, it's got to get over the continent of Africa. I think the atmosphere will be a little bit more jittery. And I think we are going to see some development in the Central American gyre and the Caribbean between this time frame right down here, okay? And still, there is some of that upward motion all the way until almost the end of July, or end of June. Oh, oh my gosh, I almost said July. So, my point here is, for one thing, climatology is at favor here. So, we're not supposed to have major hurricanes in June and a plethora of them, right? That's going to be in September, Instead, what we're going to start looking for is, are we going to get at least one name storm or two name storms in June? That can still happen. We have plenty of time to go. We have another four or five weeks to go. Actually, another four weeks to go before we get into July. A lot can change in four weeks, okay? So I want to make that clear with you all. Just because it's quiet now, please do not make pretty predictions and saying, oh, it's going to be a dead season. We're only predicting 15 to 20 name storms. Maybe that's going to end up happening. We don't know, but there's a lot of signal that backs up a very active, hyperactive season. At this point, a lot of agencies are going with 25 or more named storms. And that's a lot of agencies. That's not just one or two agencies out there that are predicting that many of named storms. Um, Colorado State University predicting 23 named storms. I'm predicting 29 named storms overall. That's my prediction with that range in mind, right? You know, um, NOAA is predicting up to 23, 24 named storms. So you really have to put that into consideration. If NOAA's predicting that much named, Colorado State University is predicting that much named storms. I think it's more well said than done that we're going to have a very hyperactive season. It's unfortunate we're living in this time where we're seeing a lot of heat content building and brewing out there. All right, enough with the talking, David. Let's move on. So the upper ocean or the velocity potential, again, self-explanatory, lots of upward motion going on at least through the end of June. We have another unfavorable environment coming in probably in mid-July. We expect that climatology and the MJO, the Mounted Julian Oscillation, lots of sinking motion. I don't see much going on, at least for right now, in mid-July, but that can change. This is very far out. We're looking at an entire month and a half out from right now. And again, this area is where we focus. So this is the Atlantic Mercator projection, and it's this box right in here is where we look for any upward or downward motion that would likely lead to enhance or suppress convection. All right. Sorry, I'm going through this a little faster. I'm trying to keep these videos relatively short. So when we look at the North uh, or the North Me North American Multimodal Ensemble, something like that. That's how you pronounce it, North NMME for short. Very bullish. More bullish in this forecast than what they were. And this is as of June the 8th. So this got released yesterday. Lots of above average precipitation that could be in the form of more tropical waves than usual. The monsoon gyre really at par with this. That's why we're seeing a lot of the upward motion. And this is for September. During the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season, we expect a lot, a lot of thunderstorm activity, lots of tropical waves, you name it. Going to be a very, very impactful season, I believe, on our hands. When we look at the CANSIPS model, this is the Canadian version of the global um, climate model. Very bullish as well. Look at all of this, uh, um, this green on your screen, even off of Africa. A very, very active, hyperactive West African monsoon season where we get these tropical waves that come off and propagate 
get a lot of uh, uh, thunderstorm activity, lots of rain in the Sahel region. That comes off of into the, the Atlantic. We get the seedlings of tropical waves and boy, looking real, really, really wet, possibly record wet down here in the southwestern Atlantic. So my point being here is the Azores, the Bermuda High, going to be stronger than normal this year. And I believe we're going to have a lot of storms that move west this year than what we had last year. We had a lot of storms that did this. The alleyway was more out in here. This year, on the other hand, we're going to have a lot of storms that uh, that get close to land areas. We could have a lot of landfalls this year. They don't say that very lightly because the pattern that we're in that favors that. The La Nina over here growing strong. The warm AMO look to the Atlantic. I won't show you the sea surface temperature anomalies because I want to kind of change things up in my videos a little bit for you all. That way I have something to talk about in tomorrow's video. But that point, uh, my point being here is the Atlantic is ready to go. It's only a matter of the background state, the MJO, these convective coupled Kelvin waves to line up perfectly to get some, some activity going. All right. The climate forecasting system is also really bullish this cycle, indicating uh, for August, September, and October, a lot of upward motion, lots of thunderstorm activity going on, lots of moisture, rainfall anomalies here above average. Yeah, all three climate models right in line with a very busy period. Definitely for August, we can definitely predict that. Certainly hyperactive for September and October. And do I rarely say this? And I do agree with what Mark Sedeth was even saying. We could have activity well into November and December this year. So don't think that, oh, we're going to, the season's going to close out really early. No, I think we're going to have a lot of activity to deal with because of that La Nina that's going to be growing stronger. I think at least until early or mid December, we're going to have at least one named storm. Until then, well, we're going to have multiple name storms in September, October. But I mean, we could get a name storm at least, one or two name storms in December of this year. All right, so one last thing here is from the ECMWF seasonal forecast. Really bullish also, indicating lots of rainfall above average in the 90th to 100th percentile of above average anomalies. Look at the Sahel region of Africa really significantly above average there. And even over um, the Western Indian Ocean, that's a very important key player for a robust African monsoon season. And that did just everything is lining up in the wrong way that can give us a very, very busy season. Certainly a hyperactive one. All right, tropical storm frequency, definitely um, very bullish. Now, I wanna make this clear. The last Euro seasonal guidance had 23 named storms in here. Now, I want to be clear. That's because it included its June forecast. Okay, assuming that we get a couple of named storms in June, this would still equate for even a more bullish forecast. So technically right now, I don't like to hype things up or make things up. The Euro is predicting 24 named storms. One named storm higher than its May prediction. Even so, it has decreased a little bit with its actual initialization of named storms because it's not including June now. We're only seeing July, August, September, October, November, and December here. Up here where you have the J-A-S-O-N-D. That's the different months. Six-month mean leads, we call this. And it's still very, very bullish. Two times the climatological average with the number of named storms. But anyways, I sure hope you enjoyed this detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Friday, June the 7th, 2024. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. Hit that red subscribe button right now. If you did like today's video, hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, you name them all. Uh, please um, share this and also leave a comment in the section below this video. As always, I'm going to try to do these at least every day for the time being. But if there's really not a lot going on by the time we go into July, we'll probably do these eventually every other day before the real busy part of the season gets going. But otherwise, I'll be back with you more tomorrow on the tropics.